Typewriters, thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to do a tutorial on a 1960s Smith Corona Electra 120. Um, hopefully, this will help you because uh, I'm sure many of you have found some either at a thrift shop or out of your grandmother's closet. And um, this typewriter tutorial will hopefully be very helpful for you. Now, if you are interested, we do have digital copies of the original user manual and I will put a link to that in the description below if you would like. Um, we just sell a digital copy for $250. Um, if you want to download one of those for yourself then um, follow that link below. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Be sure as you're watching this to give us a thumbs up and subscribe and share our channel. That's really helpful for us. Um, and we sure appreciate it. Okay, so first of all, this is a 12 inch carriage. Um, a lot of the typewriters have 10 inch carriages, which is the same width as the typewriter. This one has an extra wide carriage so that you can use it for, um, if you wanna type landscape or if you even have bigger paper like 11 by 14s. Um, for this reason, I recommend this for crafters. A lot of crafters use typewriters. You don't have to have a 12 inch carriage as a crafter, but in my mind, you guys are so amazing. Who knows what you're gonna come up with? And so you might as well get a 12 inch carriage to give you more opportunities um, in case you do have a project where you have a larger paper. Okay. This is the original color for this particular one. These come in, um, I don't remember the original colors on them. Um, I think there's blue and white. We have, uh, they, they come in a dark brown. There's metallic blues. Um, and then sometimes we repaint. This is the style that we tend to repaint the most. We didn't on this one, but most of these typewriters come in this condition where they're, they're kind of chipped up and which is why we usually repaint them in really fun colors, but this one, this is an original color. Okay, so this is electric with a manual return. That means you do have to plug this in to the wall, and um, no, it does not use batteries. All right, so the first thing, we're gonna start with the back. We're gonna move our way forward. I am gonna assume you don't know anything about typewriters, so if you do already know some things, um, thank you for your patience. Okay, back here we have our paper holder. You just pop that up and it keeps your paper from flopping over while you're typing. It actually is pretty handy. To set your margins, you have two white tabs. You just press and drag, okay? That's how you set those margins. Now, to move this carriage, you have a lever, and there should be one on both sides, but it is actually very common for these typewriters to have one of the levers break off, such as the it's broken off on the left side here. But it doesn't matter, you can still, it doesn't matter which side, you just pull it in, and you can hear that bell. This bell sounds nice and strong, that bell <clears throat> excuse me, is going to ding a couple characters before your right margin. That's just to say, hey, you're really close to your right margin. It's gonna be time for you to hit your return handle and go to the next line. Um, as we type, then um, maybe you that bell goes off, but you're in the middle of a word and 
you're like now stuck because once it hits that margin, that typewriter is going to stop on you. And, um, and then you're going to have a margin. You'll need to use your margin release, which I will show you here in just a second. Right here on the right side, this is your paper release. And I'm going to show you what that's for right now. So let's go ahead and take a piece of paper and you load it right against this back silver ruler right here, kind of right, right in front of those margin tabs. You just set it there, turn your handle, that'll pull it right through and make sure it goes underneath the bar and then come all the way up. And you'll notice that mine is crooked. That's where this paper release comes in really handy. Pull that forward, straighten it out, and then release. Now, um, yes, paper release, we were talking about that. Now I'm gonna move the carriage over and that's where my left margin is. Over here on the left side, you're gonna see a one, two, and three. That is your line selector. So right now it's on one. That means every time I hit the return handle, it's gonna advance one line. Two is double spacing, not spacing, double line. Three is triple line. So whatever you would like on that. Okay, I am now gonna move this carriage all the way to the left. And before we open this top, because if we don't, then this return handle will scrape the top of your typewriter. So a lot of typewriters have scrapes right here or scratches. That's what it's from. You just pull it forward gently, open up the top, and you're going to see the ribbon inside. Now, this typewriter model takes a universal ribbon. They're very easy to find. You can find them on our website at jotandtotaltypewriters.com. There is a link below as well. Um, if your typewriter has the original spools and you just want fresh ribbon on it, simply um, uh, click the custom ribbon link below and you can send us your spools and we'll wrap it with fresh ribbon for you. So when it's time to change your ribbon, it's really simple. You just lift them out. You'll see that the ribbon came out of the little guide wire here. I have an up close image of this whole area and um, so that way you kind of know how to thread your ribbon through those guide wires. It's a messy process, but um, you got to do it. You may want to use um, uh, gloves if uh, you want because you will get ink everywhere. Okay, so just make sure it's threaded properly in this guide wire through these and then this one over here. Black is on top, red is on bottom. When you get to the end of the spool, it's not the end of the ink. You need to reverse the direction of your ribbon. To do it manually, it's right here. Ribbon reversal, rib rev is ribbon reversal. You should be able to reverse the direction of that ribbon many times before you need to change your ribbon. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll take a look at the keyboard. So your on off switch is over here on the right side. I like to give it a little bit of time um, for the engine to kind of kick in. Engine, haha, <laughs> motor. Um, that's just me personally. And yes, these, um, sometimes the motor is loud and sometimes they're soft. All of them are completely different. Keep in mind, these are vintage items. If it sounds like it's really loud and grinding, sometimes that means the cover is bumping up against the motor. And I am gonna show you what to do in that case. So I'm gonna open this up right here. I don't know if you can see it, you're gonna see the motor turning. Every once in a while, um, usually from people picking up the typewriter right here and um, putting pressure, too much pressure on it, this cover can get bent that way and it pushes up against this motor and you'll hear this grinding. If that happens while the cover is open, just gently press it this way, just gently, not very hard at all. Close it, see if that makes it better. Um, try it until and uh, to see if that relieves the noise. Again, don't press too hard on this because you don't want to break it. It's just real gentle. Okay, so we have it on. And um, let's first of all take a look at our tabs. I haven't checked the tab on this one yet, but this is your tab, this long bar. You just press that, and there is a tab set right there in the middle. To clear it, you hit clear. Let's see if that worked. Yes, it did. 
So now let's set some tabs. Let's go to here. We'll set a tab. And then let's go over here, set another tab. So there's the one tab, there's tab two. Um, and then I think if you just hold the clear and kind of do this, that should clear all your tabs. Let's see, it does. Okay, so you have two ways to clear it. You either go to the tab and hit clear or you hold the clear down while you release the carriage and that should clear your tabs. Over here is your backspace. Backspace does not erase, all right? It, um, it just only backspace and you can type over your mistakes. Now there's that bell telling me I'm at the end of my margin. Let's, let's take a look at what happens when we are at the, so now it's stopped. It's not typing anymore. So I'm gonna hit MR, it's on the right side for margin release. The end. And that's how you kind of finish your thought or your sentence. Obviously margin release is not meant to be used at every line. You wanna set your margin to where you truly wanna have your margin end. It's just for the occasional use. Here's your color selector for your ribbon. It's on black right now. Down is red. Here's your shift, shift lock. To undo the shift lock, you hit just either one of the big shift buttons. And then here is your space bar. If you hold it down, it'll power space. And then also there are three keys on an electric typewriter that have an auto repeat. That's gonna be your dash, your X, and your period. And you can do, create little dividers. You can use it to X out mistakes. Some people use that for typewriter art whatever you wanna use that for, but that option is there. All right, so that is how you use a 1960 Smith Corona Electra 120. I hope you found this helpful and may you all have a blessed day. Happy typing.